Good morning, everybody. Yeah, my voice is not so good. It's not so exciting this morning. Yeah, I, I'm leaving, and the flu is leaving me. Uh, and I'm sweating a little bit, so don't uh, <laughs> run out of me, okay? Uh, welcome, it's, a, it's a, a pleasure to have you here. And for this workshop, and then I, I'm doing this initial uh, talk to acknowledge uh, the, the workshop, the effort we, 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 we did to have this workshop here and acknowledge the, the Institute of Advanced uh, Studies that is hosting the, the institute in the name of Professor Paulo Saldiva that could not be here um, uh, to... Um, introduce the institute okay um, well we we have some some information be, before we introduce ourselves okay uh, the first one is that uh, we have fire exits okay it's not for the public that is at home okay because we are transmitting the meeting uh, via streaming okay it's been recorded too but the fire exits is out there and to the right Toilets are to the left. Please do not confound. <laughs> this is a free uh, moral and sexual harassment meeting workshop. So it's important to reinforce this kind of, of uh, value. And it's an inclusive meeting uh, so that everybody is invited to talk, to um, uh, discuss to present your opinions, okay? Um, to the public that is here, so we are recording. Um, uh, you signed the authorization to use your images. Um, if not, you need to sign, please, or not. Uh, uh, and then we are not going to uh, share your, your images. Uh, the questions uh, will be done later by using the mic that is here. Okay, and we ask you to put your mobiles in the Flight mode. silent mode, no? or turn off it. For the public that is online, uh, we can have uh, questions. Uh, we can receive questions through the email. IEA responde tudo junto, all together. IEA responde arroba usp.br. IAE responde <laughs> at usp.br. Okay? Uh, the video and the photos will be available in the Mediateca of the Institute of Advanced Studies some days after the meeting. Um, so now we are going to introduce ourselves and then the, they we do the, their presentation. Huh? So this meeting. This workshop is part of a project, a joint project uh, between the University of Surrey, UFABC, no, Universidade Federal do ABC, the UNESCO Chair for uh, Ocean Sustainability that is hosted here in USP, in the Institute of Advanced Studies and in the uh, Institute Oceanographic Institute, and uh, by Instituto Costa Brasilis that is uh, taking care of all the the the, the, the resources of, of the project, okay? And this uh, appeared, uh, this, this initiative was, was uh, created by Kaylee, that will introduce herself, um, that um, because we know each other some time ago, we knew each other some time ago, and then she, she is working on these uh, different aspects of marine litter, the social aspects of marine litter, and then we uh, started some, some conversations some year, years ago. Natalia was, was part of that in a meeting organized by, by Ronaldo, which is here in Santos, under the scope of the British Council. Huh? And then it created this movement. So thank you, Ronaldo. Huh? Uh, it seeded this, so it's important to say that, okay? And then we are here, mm -hmm. and we are do our best to, if the flu allows, okay? <laughs> so say that, I will start with uh, introductions, asking Kaylee to introduce herself. 
So I'll just keep it brief. So I'm Kaylee Wiles from the University of Surrey uh, and looking at the uh, people side of marine litter. Hi, I'm Natalia uh, Gilardi. Uh, I'm from the Federal University of ABC and I'm here uh, looking for partnerships concerning citizen science in general and the biodiversity or marine litter. So. Hi everyone, I am Larissa Kawabi. I think most of you have talked to me yet. Um, <laughs> I'm also from Federal University of ABC, um, supervised by Natalia there. I've been working with citizen science since uh, 2015. Is that right? Yes, I think so. And I am the researcher assistant here at the OLA project, basically. Okay, and I am Alexander Turra. I am professor here in the Oceanographic Institute of the Sao Paulo University. And I am the chairholder of the UNESCO Chair on Ocean Sustainability that was created last year. So we are all interested in marine litter and in citizen science. Yes. <laughs> okay. We, we, sorry? No, it's over to you. Okay. Uh, to over to you. Yes, we have some questions to you. We are going to have an introduction moment, okay? So we are not to, going to ask your names because the name is in the, your badge, okay? And you, ha you, you have time to talk to each other during these days. <laughs> so we created a different way to introduce yourselves. I will ask some questions and then who identifies itself with the question? Stand up and then sit. Do you know that, no, Simone? <laughs> the first question, who is from NGOs? Okay. Second question, who is from government? Uh, thanks. Who is from university and research institutions? Yes, I need. Very good. Who is angry with Sao Paulo traffic? <laughs> okay. Who lives, who lives at the coast? Yeah, the opposite of the last question. <laughs> who works on seats and science? Mais ou menos. More or less. Yes, okay, more or less. Um, uh, who considers uh, education and research are important for the society? <laughs> Why this question was put here, I don't know. I have no idea. Who does environmental education? More, uh, we have only more 30 questions, okay? <laughs> The best one is the last, the next one. Who likes chocolate? <laughs> yes, a lot of happy, happy people here. Who does work on marine litter? And the last one, who is interested in citizen science and marine litter? <laughs> Obvious. <laughs> so you are now introduced to each other. Okay? Okay. To finish this and move on, I need to say that today is a very important day. I'm talking in a uh, personal way, not in an institutional way, okay? Uh, today is a day that brings us the possibility to discuss very important things. And the logic behind the, this, the manifestation that is being done today is almost the same. The principles that guide citizen science. Huh? the importance of people, the importance of science, the importance of society, the importance of participation. No? And although we are not there in the manifestation because this meeting was planned some months ago and the, the, date, the data was, was blocked <laughs> since then, we could not uh, uh, move, uh, change it. But I think even being here, we at least the ones that would like to be there, may consider that are there too. 
okay? So uh, I think this is a kind of, a, kind of a way to uh, create some kind, some type of, of resilience in the society to uh, move, move the society to a better, better situation in the future. So it's not a manifestation uh, in the, on the streets, but it's a, um, a background manifestation to create a movement. So I would like to say that. <laughs> and then? And so that's a general kind of goal of why we're here. Um, but what we would actually like to achieve, both us as a team, but also hopefully for all of you, we have five main objectives from these two, three days of workshop. <coughs> so the first is to identify and actually initiate a network of people who are interested in uh, marine litter and or uh, citizen science. So as you all stood, I think we can actually tick that, that already. We're all here today, so hopefully you'll find these networking opportunities very useful. Second is actually to understand what is already being done um, across Brazil. So over the course of these two days, we're hearing about uh, lots of different initiatives and understanding um, what is actually being done in terms of marine litter more generally. And then we'll look um, towards actually seeing how citizen science can actually be implemented in any existing initiatives. So um, where are there some citizen science uh, initiatives already in place and where could there be? Uh, what are the opportunities and what are the potential uh, barriers that we need to overcome and how can we overcome those. So we'll be using a lot of uh, times for discussion and hearing your views and your thoughts uh, and try to understand this a bit further. We'll then have a hands-on experience of citizen science. This is Saturday, a nice early morning start, but uh, I'm planning to sleep on the bus, so please join me. Um, <laughs> But so with that, we can actually experience what types of citizen science we could be doing. Um, and then finally, uh, we'll hopefully summarize everything that comes out of this uh, meeting to uh, produce a report so that we've got this um, for future documentation. So that's our goals, why we're here. Um, over the next uh, two days, we will talk about each of those. Uh, so today, we'll be very much focused on marine litter and initiatives more generally. And then tomorrow we'll focus much more on uh, citizen science uh, and discussing that further. I'd like to point out um, back to the inclusivity uh, aspect that Alex talked about. Please do volunteer your thoughts. There is no wrong answer. Uh, and just be kind to one another and let everybody um, have their say. Uh, Food is an important part, so we have planned plenty of coffee and lunch breaks, so time to talk and time to eat. Um, and we have most of the plenary sessions as one whole group here in this room, but we also have some other breakout rooms which we'll use later on. And then finally, to introduce Alex again, where you can stay seated, I don't think he's planned any exercise for you for the next few minutes, um, where he'll then talk about marine litter and actually why are we here. So okay. I think, thank you very much. I think we'll leave you on the stage. Okay, thank you. Well, so uh, the idea is to talk why marine litter is important. Eh? So most of you probably already know that. But today I would like to reinforce the things and bring to you some evidence or some information about the international agenda that's growing to face the problem of marine litter. And there are several innovative movements, international movements, that need to be internalized in the country to be, to be considered, okay? So, oops, the idea is that the oceans are under multiple stress. And you know a lot about that. And one of these stressors is marine litter. That is a wicked problem because it has different origins, different processes, different problems, different impacts. The good thing of the litter is that the litter is visible, most of them, at least when they are composed by bigger items. Huh? And then we can see, and that's a very important thing that allows us uh, to communicate with people, to, uh, that allows people, the society, to understand this as a problem, as the sewage. Uh, 
Huh? Sewage, we cannot see sometimes, but we smell. But there are other problems that are not easy to see, but they are there too. So it's an opportunity to use litter as an entry point to discuss the quality of the oceans as a whole. Okay? So there are multiple origins and processes. There is the, this magic number that 80% of the litter comes from land and 20% comes from this, the sea activities, this, the activities uh, being conducted at the sea. <coughs> and then this brings us to the logic of the source to sea approach that was the basis of this paper published in 2015, showing that the Southeast Asia is the biggest hotspots uh, generating litter to the ocean from land-based sources. Brazil is the, in the position 16. In the sea, as you know, the litter moves. Moves from the coast to the sea, to the ocean, the open ocean, and to the gyres, and then to the floor, and then to the biota, and then again to the floor, to the surface. And there is a very important and interesting process that's not been well described yet. So we don't know exactly what's happening in these different compartments and the budgets of these, uh, uh, of these movements. This represents the, a model that calculated the the concentration of microplastics in the ocean, and you can see, rugely, that this correlates with the gyres that are here. As we know, the litter is entrapped, entrapped in, the, in the gyres uh, for some time, because uh, not necessarily the litter stays in the gyres, because they sink when they become small and... and, and uh, how can I say that? Encrusted, uh, folded, they sink, and then we don't know where they go. So it's important to understand these processes. And then the litter is composed by different types, processes, uh, quantities representing the exposure, and effects to the organisms or to the society. So we are not going to talk only about organisms, about the impacts on the biodiversity. We are also going to talk about impacts on the society. So when you see these types of litter that we collected in the beaches of Sao Paulo, you can see that there are different types of things. M although most of them are, are composed by plastics, this represents different processes and different, different ways to, to, combat, to combat it. Okay? And, uh, and there is one subliminal message here in this, in this slide that is this one. It's a joke that can on, only be done in Portuguese. I'm sorry. Huh? Do you know this? What's the name of that? It's toilet in Portuguese. Privada. Ou seja, praia pública. Não é privada, né? Então, a gente tem um problema. We have a conceptual problem. Yeah. So, the litter has different uh, brings different threats to the society. One uh, risk associated to litter is to the biodiversity, okay? And sometimes uh, the, amount, the increasing amount of litter in the ocean can cause blooms of organisms, like this insect, alobates, which is an oceanic, oceanic insect, that can deposit their eggs in, in a floating plastic, and then it may cause a bloom in the air populations. And this may have consequences in the food chain, né? uh, in a bottom, in a top-down uh, manner or in a bottom-up manner, but also in terms of genetic mixing and dispersal of, of uh, the population. So we have, we may have important problems associated with the uh, the blooms of organisms uh, due to the litter. One uh, another aspect related to the biodiversity is the potential of litter to to uh, cause invasions of species, uh, because some species like these two uh, were already described uh, associated with floating litter, and then the floating litter can bring them to new places, and then they may uh, become invasive species. This is an extremely unknown process 
uh, un until now. We need to invest more in understanding that. Another one is related to fisheries and biodiversity. So we have impacts of ghost fishing on the, on the biodiversity, but we have also uh, impacts of litter fishing in the fish nets to the fishermen too. So we have problems, we have uh, environmental problems here and we have social and economic problems too. So these guys are spending too much time in cleaning their nets and uh, fixing their nets because of the amount of litter. Here is, a, is one of the information derived from the thesis of Alan, which is here, Alan Krelin. Uh, that uh, analyzed the, the potential of litter to uh, make people avoid beaches depending on the scenario. So we use a different scenarios here to inter understand the, the way people will deal with that situation and how much uh, or, or the, the potential of that, that situation, that scenario, make that, that people uh, avoid the beach. And this may cause impacts at the order of $8.5 million per year for a municipality in the north of Paraná, which is a very small one, Pontal do Sul, Pontal do Paraná. So it's very, very complicated. We have risks to navigation. This is for the Museum of the Future in Rio de Janeiro, né? Museu da Manhã. And this is the litter perhaps showing what will be our tomorrow. Né? But we have problems related to engines, related to uh, cooling systems in, in big vessels. So one of these vessels, in this case, was, um, I don't know, don't know how to say that in English, ficou a deriva, it was stopped on dri at drift at the ocean, and then it may cause serious problems, may uh, cause death and, and loss of income. Okay, we have risks to humans, although it's not completely clear. Okay, uh, we may have potential risks related to humans. Uh, when we talk about particles, uh, what we know now is that particles do not do not build, uh, accumulate, and build magnify. But we have evidence that the chemicals that are in the particles can be transferred to the organisms, and then they could magnify, uh, bioaccumulate and mag biomagnify. So this is uh, one of the biggest areas of research now uh, that need to bring evidence, that will bring evidence to discuss the risks to humans in terms of consumption, in terms of consumption of fish, of fisheries, of uh, products from the aquaculture. Okay, uh, and it's interesting because some people are arguing now that we inhalate more microplastics than we can consume eating fish because we do not eat fish stomach normally. Yeah, we are not birds, but when we have small fish, we fry uh, as a whole. But normally we do not eat the guts, we eat the meat. And then we are talking about the microplastics that are in the meat, which is very, very small in small quantities. Okay? And then rafting of pathogens, we are talking about Vibrio, E. coli, several of, uh, of, of or pathogens that can, be, uh, can cause harm to humans or biodiversity. So these are some of the problems. It's an overview of the problems of the risks of litter in the sea to the society, to the biodiversity, and to the socioeconomics. Uh, now, I, I am going to show you some of the, very briefly, some of the movements we can, we can record in the international agenda related to marine litter, okay? Obviously, marine litter is an environmental problem. And we are discussing environmental pro problems since uh, the, 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 the 60s, uh, since the Club of Rome and uh, the initiation of the discussions in the Stockholm um, uh, Convention. So, uh, but not naming marine litter. Uh, and ne not necessarily taking care 
of the oceans or considering the oceans. The discussion was, was not focused on the oceans, was not understanding the problems and the, and the, and the uh, peculiarities of the ocean. So there are several movements from the 60s to now that show us that the marine litter and the oceans are becoming more important in this agenda. And then I will show to you uh, the, 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 the discussions in the uh, international conventions related to the environment, obviously uh, they were important in that discussion. The, the Earth Summit and the letter of, the, of Earth that started to, to discuss these things in special, in Portuguese here, litter, okay, and plastics. It is in 1992, okay. The Millennium Development Goals that do, did not mention the oceans and obviously did not mention litter, but oceans and litter are behind all these, almost all these goals. The Agenda 2030 with the 17 uh, development goals, with one dedicated to the ocean, and this one with one action dedicated to, uh, to litter. Okay, 14.1, this one. So by 2025, prevent and significantly reduce marine pollution of all kinds, in particular from land-based activities, including marine debris and nutrient pollution. The London Convention in 75 started to discuss the pollution in the sea, but in 73, Marpol bring, uh, brought the discussion of litter and said in the Annex 5 that plastics cannot be thrown into the sea in any place, not close to the coast, ne neither uh, farther, eh? distant from the coast. So it's, it's, it was there in 73, okay? And then we have the regional seas program that incorporated a lot of discussions on the, on the marine litter, the GPA, which is the Global Pro Program of Action uh, for the Protection of the Marine Environment from Land-Based Activities, which incorporated extremely the, the logic of, of waste management and marine litter, okay? Um, this uh, GPML, which is the Global uh, Partnership on Marine Litter, was created in 2012 as a consequence of the HU plus 10, uh, sorry, HU plus, plus 20 um, uh, meeting here in Rio. And this uh, is an example of, our, of what regional seas are producing in terms of documents. This, we have already 12 regional uh, regional, um, how can I say, um, uh, marine litter plants, plants to combat marine litter related to the regional seas uh, with recommendations to mitigate and combat the problem. So it started in 2009. We have NOAA, we have uh, NOAA with a strong, um, um, how can I say, a strong protagonism in marine litter with several actions, several uh, monitoring programs, um, uh, mobile apps, uh, in creating some support to society to discuss these questions, including the, the, the meetings, uh, the international meetings on marine debris, and the Onolulu commitment created together with UNEP in 2012, 2011 trying to synthesize the ideas or, their, or the strategies to combat marine litter. And then last year we had the, the, an, another marine debris conference that was uh, compiling all the, the evidences, the recent evidences on marine litter. The Honolulu strategy uh, is relatively simple. There are three main actions, line of actions. One of one is prevent introduction from land. The second one is preventing introduction from the sea. And the third one is the removal from the environment. There are some, some regional movements like the OSPAR Commission and the uh, European Union uh, initiatives. The, the initiatives related to the countries that speak Portuguese. The GESAMP initiatives producing four reports in the next 10 years only to discuss marine litter and microplastics. This working group 40 is now renewing its uh, actions for a new phase to focus on the risks, the broader risks on, 
on the society and on the biodiversity. And then we have UNEA, UNEA which is the United Nations Environmental Assembly that is uh, in its fourth uh, meeting, was conducted in last February, uh, that is preparing resolutions. We have four resolutions that focus on marine litter, only focusing on marine litter. And these resolutions are signed by countries and guide countries, although they are not binding, obligate, they support countries in establishing their programs, their actions, their they are, they are ways to deal with the problem, okay? And then it was created a NADOC open-ended expert group on marine litter and microplastics that is, uh, uh, Brazil is taking part, at least at, until last year I was taking part of this group, but now things changed a little bit. We have a movement in G7 group and D G20 group uh, leaded now by, by Japan, and all these initiatives are trying to find ways and support and fund ways to combat marine litter. The UN created the Clean Seas Program, which most of you already know and probably are participating. We had the Ocean Conference, in which we had lots of volunteer commitments, 70 of them related to marine litter. And finally, last year, we produced this report that was launched uh, in the ONIA this year to uh, bring guidelines for the monitoring and assessment of plastics litter, plastic litter in the ocean. I was one of the editors of this report, and uh, the idea was to bring some, some uh, support for uh, reduce uncertainty in the estimates of marine litter, allow data intercomparability between countries, allow data sharing, encourage international cooperation, disseminate good practices, and support the development of, sorry, it's wrong, of targets and sub-indicators of the SDG 14. Oh, the, the idea is to improve the way we are measuring litter in the ocean. And this brings us to this meeting, because this is a kind of way we can move on in terms of producing data and bringing information to the sea. This is a kind of uh, table that is in the, the report, and this table shows here uh, the types of policy concerns that we are trying to address measuring marine litter. So we are talking about impacts on tourism, on seafood safety, on human health and human injuries, navigational hazards, fisheries and aquaculture, animal welfare, biodiversity. And then you can see that if you will consider different compartments and as shoreline, seafloor, biota, sea surface, or sub-compartments like fish, invertebrates, seabirds, or megafauna, or different plastic size, so macroplastics, microplastics, mesoplastics, you can have different types, you can answer different types of policy questions. Okay? And perhaps we can find uh, an additional way or additional uh, strategy to produce information uh, to feed this, uh, this table and to feed the policies, to feed policy makers, to feed society in terms of information on marine litter. Because marine litter and society have a very strong relationship. This report was produced by Kaylee uh, last year and, and brings the, uh, this perspective on the relationship between litter and the society, which is not so, so shallow. It's, it has very deep uh, links and things that are not so clear for people that are not working on that. Uh, in deep. Okay, so we, we have the opportunity to discuss the things with Kaylee this this week. So uh, the idea is to use this workshop to talk, to share, and to build. Okay, and hope you are excited. Uh, you, as you could see, I spoke in Portuguese using English words, uh, uh, and or at least try to do that. And if you didn't understand, I can start from the beginning. No. 
yeah, perhaps coffee to recover from this exciting talk with this exciting voice. Okay, so uh, that's the idea, people. We are here to try to build something, not only for us, not only for us that are organizing this, for us as a country, for us uh, as a country which is facing this problem, which has a national plan that needs to be implemented, and it will be only implemented and evaluated properly if you have data. This is a key question, a key, a key point of the, the process, and, and the result of this workshop and this project probably we wish could improve this. Okay? Thank you. So we are reconvening. Uh, for the for the this next session where we have we, we are going to have examples of initiatives in Brazil working with <coughs> environmental education and marine litter. Uh, so we have here uh, <coughs> Guilherme Fluckinger. Okay, <coughs> Guilherme is an oceanographer, our former student here in the Institute of, in the Oceanographic Institute. <coughs> he is now uh, Argonauta Institute's field technician, uh, Kimas scuba diver instructor, underwater conductor of the Revis Alcatrazes, um, and uh, colonist of Informar Ubatuba. He lives at the coast and has a very good uh, relationship with, with local people, with uh, different actors, stakeholders, and is engaged into this uh, program of, of, of beach monitoring. Uh, that is a very nice opportunity to collect information from beaches. So, oh, yeah. Guilherme, welcome here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, first, I, I am here in place of Hugo Gallo, the president of the Aquarium of Ubatuba and the Argonauta Institute, NGO. And he's very sorry to not be here, but he had some personal problems and cannot be here. Also, Berenice Gallo from Tamar Project could not be here too. And now I'm representing the Aquarium of Ubatuba and the Argonauta Institute. And here I will tell to you about some activities that we make uh, regarding the problem of marine litter. First, we go back to the past, uh, to the foundation of Aquarium of Ubatuba. Uh, was founded in 1995 uh, in Hugo Gallo uh, in the first carnival after the inauguration had had departed with this situation uh, in January 1996 the beach was completely completely full of leader and then he started to think about this problem the the aquarium is uh, one of the pioneer, is the first, uh, really is the first private aquarium open for public visitation, is in Ubatuba City, and is first to introduce the method of the tank contact, touch contact tank, uh, allowing to visitors to, to get more closely to the organisms marine organism and was one of the pioneer of the work with marine litter in here in Brazil uh, after he departed with this scene he started to make some activities like clean up beaches after uh, the concept of clean up day and uh, has organized some uh, some organize, organized some activities of cleaning the beach and was one of the pioneers here in Brazil to do the cleanup day as it is done uh, worldwide. Then he also 
reserved some space on the Aquarium of Ubatuba to uh, to present the problem, the, the, the marine litter issue. Here in the photo, we can pass through a hall that has a lot of items that was collected on the beaches or fishermen has collected and bring to, to aquarium. Uh, he also did uh, some theater, theater with uh, marine animals or fishermen or people. Uh, regarding the the problem of lit marine leader and also uh, has has adapted the by moat marine laboratory a poster that was f uh, completely uh, completely devoid and has a uh, was widely widely uh, spread it around the institutes and and other NGOs and other associations. Uh, only in Aquarium of Batuba, circa of three thousand people per year visits the the cen visitor center, and is it was with partnership with Pr Tamar Project. And also all the ce visitor centers of Tamar uh, has also this, this poster. And uh, it has reached a lot and a lot of people. And in, uh, in 1997, where Marine Litter was not so fully, uh, not fully understand and not so fully, uh, people doesn't know what this this problem and this poster uh, aboard the duration of the leader on the sea duration of the garbage and most of people today doesn't know how much it it uh, it lasts it rests in the oceans and how many time it it takes to to uh, degrade it and. Then he created the board of the aquarium of Ubatuba, created the NGO Argonauta Institute, basically to uh, get uh, more rescue and rehabilitation of aquatic animals and awareness campaigns about the sea litter and about uh, other activities, um, anthropic activities that affect marine animals and training uh, also is is more to get some viability of research for education research projects related to marine conservation uh, get some cooperation between institutions and uh, it has several institutes in brazil and worldwide more than 100 uh, that he make partnerships and and was sponsored and and other uh, types of, of partnerships. And the Argonaut Institute work with rehabilitation with marine mammals, of marine mammals. But he also get uh, environmental education projects like the Museum of Marine Life that is in Aquarium of Ubatuba. And now we are uh, constructing a new museum in the visitor center of the uh, Argonaut Institute uh, is a, a little bigger wider little wider and also work with Sabina in Sant Andre some educational projects and we have the rehabilitation center for aquatic animals today we are doing the beach monitoring project is a uh, conditioning uh, to to Petrobras explore the pressal uh, pressal layer. We, uh, he must uh, take um, do some conditions that IBAMA, the uh, uh, federal agency of Brazil, uh, demand to to do. And one of these conditions is the monitoring beach project that is we go to the beach 
and see if there was some leader uh, or oil or anything uh, related to the the, the oil and gas exploration in the Santos Basin. And we also take the uh, monitor the marine animals, basically sea turtles, seabirds, and uh, marine mammals. We register the dead animals and t try to rehabilitate the live ones. And we also make necropsies that we can uh, further analysis if there is some impact or not to the uh, related to the oil and gas exploration. We covered uh, the beaches, the Argonaut Institute covered the beaches of Ilha Bela, Ubatuba, São Sebastião and Caraguá. Uh, the most of the beaches are monitored uh, daily and, and we, we we found at, at this moment uh, 6,703 specimens of animals and the most dead. And, and to, uh, during the necropsy at once, 1,500, circa 500 animals were so were presented some kind of anthropogenic uh, interaction and more than half of that was about leader impact. We found some leader in the gut content of the animals or entangled in the, the exterior of the animal. And the other interactions was fishery, boats and aggression. This is some emblematic cases of the uh, uh, that we we recorded. This is a meg megalanic penguin with a rose bouquet, but plastic bouquet, uh, all over the the body, and a swordfish that a fisherman bring to us entangled with the fishing gear. This is a brown booby. He was rescued with uh, some rope uh, material on the beak, and this species uh, has uh, uh, in an interior nostril. He must keep the 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 bill open it so it can breathe. And with this rope, he cannot breathe. But we rescued uh, rescued it at the time. And some other things that we we found on the gut content, like paints and uh, barbecue wooden piece. And this is another that uh, gets wide, widely spread by the internet. That was a dolphin that uh, flip flop tire in, in was on the 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 mouth of the dolphin and he could not uh, feed and then he he was very 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 st starved and and uh, he was found that stranded on the beach and by monitoring daily the beaches we depart also with this sense and we uh, we get the effort of the monitoring to do something. And then we start to uh, collect some items and also make some separation and quantification qualification of the, the some items of some beaches. And daily we 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 started to collect during the the monitoring. Uh, the marine litter, but not in, not with the intention of clean all the beach, but to uh, to get a little uh, uh, little amount to also bring a, 
bring a reality of what is going on on these beaches. We use the item table of the NAP and uh, to do this, this thing, we have a lot of people making this, this monitoring daily. And we cover 57 beaches in Batuba, 31 in São Sebastião, 29 in Ilhabela, and 15 in Caraguatatuba. A total of 28.3 tons was collected between 2016 and 2019. The most of the leader collected was plastic, about 70%. And here is the items, plastic items collected, most packages and uh, plastic uh, and bottles and cape bottles. Uh, and also we repaired that we found some old leader, uh, some with uh, validity of 1997, 1996, uh, paste tubs, um, margarine, tu uh, packages, Coca-Cola, I don't know if I can say it, but Coca-Cola, uh, and also international leaders. That international leaders we found most in San Sebastião and Ilha Bela, and we started to look where is the origin of this international leader and compare to the ships, to the vessels uh, waiting for a dock on the port. And we have almost uh, found that the, the, this international leader was related to the ships. And this is inclusive one of the future projects of of the institute to do some partnership with port and other uh, municipalities and and with the the ships to do a educational project to to mitigate this this problem and also we found uh, during it was 2017 or 2018 uh, a container ship logging Pantanal has some containers uh, dropped to the water and some of these items like the, the Christmas balls was uh, collected by us one year after one year later uh, in, in almost all the beaches uh, from Ilha Bela, San Sebastião to Batuba and we also collect the, the marine leader and we uh, has made a Christmas tree with this with this Christmas balls that we found during the all the year and uh, also other leader marine leader that we we found this is only a few part of uh, a little part of uh, what we found uh, and we make a, a paper uh, bringing modeling to the uh, this the to this balls this Christmas balls. We have do this modeling to help uh, future accidents. We hope that is uh, it's not going to happen but is a frequently case uh, container ships falls on the sea very frequently uh, we also do uh, have do a bulletin bulletin of the marine uh, leader uh, CETESB the uh, state agency of uh, environmental state agency of São Paulo has a, a bulletin of the quality of water, vulnerability of water. And we take this idea and bring to, to make this bulletin. I have br brought some of them and uh, go to distribute, distribute to you. Uh, and we use a, methodolo a methodology 
uh, of classification proposed by Earl uh, and all, uh, but adapted to our region. region. And these are some of the results that we uh, we we spread along. Uh, some of the, most of the beaches are classified like Trasso. It's not absent, but not so chaotic. And the future actions uh, is the continuity of the environmental education work by continuing this program on the beaches and talking with people there daily and continuing to this uh, bulletin and also uh, spread this bulletin to other institutions that make this beach monitoring project that reached Rio de Janeiro to Santa Catarina and also some places on the northeast, northeast coast. Other, other thing that we're going to do is to, uh, regarding the old leader, like to Hasid, uh, some fishermen catch very, very a large amount of, of marine leader on their nets, principally trawling. Then we use this effort that is already done by these fishermen and we can use to diagnose the, the old leader. Uh, we have the cap catch per unit of effort and we can make an a estimation of this marine leader. And we, we thought that this old leader uh, is going uh, most older on this uh, marine leader bring by trawl. And we are uh, looking for partnership sponsors and we are going to contact uh, responsible agencies. Other, other thing that we already do is the, to distribute waste baskets in partnership with the city hall and Tamar and we must, we gonna we're going to uh, make this in more beaches. We try to, to reach more beaches. And we also not notice that the marine leader in the beaches, uh, after rains, is, is very uh, bigger. The problem is bigger because of the river and the, the population that lives uh, the river in communities. Uh, that throw the garbage on the rivers and we want to create eco barriers on the, these rivers. And thank you very much and sorry about my English. <laughs> thank you for the presentation, Guilherme. Uh, I, I, I just want to know uh, if you, w w within that list uh, of the types of uh, plastics or uh, the debris that you found, if uh, there are cigarette butts there? Yes. Yes? Yes, a lot. And uh, w which, which one of those? I see. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. One important thing Thank is that we do this collect of marine litter during the monitoring, so we cannot uh, take a long time or deviate so much of our way. And some items past, uh, past we, we cannot see, and the, the future of cigars maybe is these ones, uh, in my opinion. This, this number would be bigger if you if you the pets is here and is bigger then this number get higher but it's not that case no. any other questions I'll, I have one quick question. So with the beach cleanups and the monitoring, both the animals and the litter, are they involving volunteers? 
And if so, who? Who are your typical people who are doing the monitoring? Uh, this this uh, staff is uh, contracted by the Argonaut Institute by this uh, licensing uh, of the IBAMA. IBAMA make this condition to Petrobras and Petrobras must give the money to do this monitoring project. It's uh, several conditioners that the Petrobras must do to explore the oil and gas. And this is one of them. There are some environmental conditioners and some social condition. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on? Can burn off all the sugar. <laughs> Hello. Uh, what do you do um, with the plastic collect? Uh, Putting correct place or? going yeah, recycling this is a very good question and we at the start we have not so much to do we going to to take on trash but uh, now we are separating some items that can do can be rec recyclable but not uh, the most of the the marine litter cannot be rec recycled it's too dirty to a lot of sand or uh, with salt, isop isopor, think isopor, polystyrene, isopor, cannot be recycled if is with salt marine water. And but yes, we we are doing this. We are separating some of the materials. Thank you. And we've probably got time for. Oh, I was going to say one more question. Let's see how quickly we can do them all. I'll creep behind you. Uh, normally, the municipalities have a daily program to clean the beach. Is that the case on these four municipalities? Uh, I cannot uh, answer for all, but Ubatuba is not the case. Caraguatatuba sometimes do. And also, the beaches that we monitor, not daily, but weekly uh, on, on the, the boat too, when we saw a lot of, of marine litter on some beaches, we tried to, to collect too. And then are also some other activities of cleanup that we do, uh, not only on the beaches that are daily monitored. And in some cases, like uh, the, the beach is chaotic, uh, we, during the, the, the before the, the monitoring, we try to collect too. And we uh, talk with the municipality agencies and to, to help us with uh, truck and tractor if necessary. But uh, Batuba has not a daily or weekly or so clean up uh, system of, of the beaches. Okay, thank you, Guilherme. <laughs> now I would like to invite Caroline Esquio from Instituto Monitoramento Mirim Costeiro to share her talk with us. Caroline is a oceanographer. She is graduated at the University of Vale do Itajaí, Univali, a, a postgraduate in economics and coastal management from the University of Barcelona. She also has a master's degree in agroecosystems from the Federal University of Santa Catarina. She's is the idealizer of the social educational program, Monitoramento Mirim Costeiro, and president of the Instituto Monitoramento Mirim Costeiro, Junior Coastal Monitoring Program. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation to participate of this workshop. It's an honor to be here today and share with you our experience. 
And I'd like to start my presentation with this picture because it shows a little about the essence of our program and what are the children, the essence of our program. Because we believe in the power of transformation that they have. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, our efforts <coughs> are about planting a little seed inside these little beans. For the future, they become a great network of guardians of the ocean. So, the Junior Coastal Monitoring Program, as known as Monitoramento Mirim Costeiro, or MMC, is a pioneer social environment education that has an, as objective the transformation of children into guardians of the ocean. Our mission is to contribute to building of responsible, critical, proactive, and more aware citizens, turning them into community agents of transformation. To achieve this goal, the MMC brings children closer to the coastal marine environment, offering significant learning experience that connect them to the environment they live in. The children's instrumentalization with research tools provokes their sense of curiosity, exploration, and stimulates their knowledge. We are located in the south of Brazil, Santa Catarina's state, in the Garopaba town. What children learn in the coastal monitoring? They learn about the tides, the waves, currents, the safety in the sea bath, they learn about climate condition, they monitor climate condition. They learn about marine biodiversity, types of beets, importance of dunes and their vegetation. They make some seawater quality. They learn about origin and composition of the sands, the impacts of marine debris, and they learn to take care of life. This is our field worksheet where children write what they observe on the beach. So we start observing the climate conditions like cloudiness, wind direction, wind intensity, air and water uh, temperature, moon phase, wave size, level tide, and size of the sand grain. The children are divided into three groups for make the uh, monitoring. And each group build a research area from the dune into the sea that correspond to one transect with 20 square meters. In total, the three groups monitoring 60 square meters. They shift and dig the sand, and they separate what is natural and what is not nature from the beach. So they count, they count the uh, amount the litter found on the beach in which square. And here is the back side of our worksheet, where these columns correspond of which uh, search square. We also make a water quality analysis with a chemistry lab. And at the end of the monitoring, we observe what structures are present on the beach. During the field research trip, the children collect, identify, and classify the litter found on the beach. They learn about the source and origin of waste its distribution in the ocean, durability, and several impact to the marine biodiversity. This exercise promotes reflection about their consumption habits, especially related to use of plastics and single-use items, as well as how this waste is disposed away. After the field, the MMC educators return to school to analyze the results with the children. They make some graphs, some data tables, and drawings. The field results, uh, our worksheet, 
uh, stay with the teachers that also use the field information for their classes and homeworks. So here we have some examples of these homeworks, like writings, drawings, comics, mosaics, and paintings done by the children. Um, we also take the children to a whale watching because in the winter, in the winter we have the right whales in our region. They come from Antarctica to our coastal zone to give birth to their babies. And most of children had never seen a whale before, so it's an unforgettable experience for them and for us always. At the end of the year, the, children's, the children get a junior coastal monitor booklet that contains stories, challenges, games, and a junior coastal monitor certificate. This is some results in six years. We started at 2012. So we had uh, almost 1,800 junior coastal monitor graduated from 12 public schools. We made 160 field trips to monitor seven beaches. We made 354 workshops. And nowadays we have two other towns that are replicating our social technology, that's Ubatuba in São Paulo coast and in Bituba at Santa Catarina state. So since 2012, we have uh, almost around uh, 30,000 people impacted. Here is our institute headquarters where we have a mini sea museum and we have some class work, uh, workshop. We receive schools that come for, for visit the museum and we offer some art and educational workshops to children of all of the aids. We also offer class, yoga classes once a week, and we had uh, Reiki too for the community. And we make some expeditions, scientific expedition, to children from five years old. We also promote the international coastal cleanup since 2011. And these are some results. We have a uh, the collaboration of a volunteer network from 13 institutions. And here we have some results of these eight years where we collect more than 91,000 of litter in more than eight beaches and two lagoons. The principal litter that we found was the cigarette butts, followed by plastics, styrofoam, bottle caps, straws or sticks, and nylon. Here are some photos of these groups cleaning the beaches. And since 2011, Almost 1,700 people have already participated in the coastal cleanup beach at Garopaba's beaches. These are some awards that we won. The most important one was the Latino America Verde or Latin America Green in 2011, where, uh, where we were chosen as the best project in the oceans category. We also participate of the ocean conference as a volunteer committee. And in, at the last year, we were, we were the um, semi-finalist of Ita Unicef Prize and finalist of Santa Catarina Pela Educação Prize. 
This is our social network. So we have the website, the Facebook, the blog, Instagram, Twitter, and newsletter where we spread our, the information of our activities. And we hope that you want to follow us in this journal to turn more and more children into guardians of the ocean. So thank you so much. Perfect. Whilst uh, Natalia makes her way up to the microphone, has anyone got any questions? Oh, oh, oh. Ah, she missed out last time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first, congratulations for your beautiful work. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to know how do you select the educators, or is it the whole group, the whole, the whole classroom that joins the, the monitoring? And I'd like to know about their level of engagement. If they're volunteers, I think they would be more engaged, but so it's depending on the first question about their engagement. Thank you. Okay. Maybe I will help. Um, I will need help in English. I will try to <laughs> respond, but if I need them, I, I don't know if somebody can help me. Eu vou fazer em português para você. É... Eu acho que eu entendi a pergunta. É, como vocês selecionam né, os participantes, Sim. os alunos, se é toda a classe, né, em que série que eles estão, como que isso é feito, e sobre o engajamento deles nas atividades. Ok, eu vou responder em português, daí se alguém puder né, e quiser é, traduzir, eu agradeço. A gente trabalha com o quarto e quinto ano das 12 escolas municipais. É um projeto dentro da rede municipal. Né? Ele, é no, ele é feito como um projeto complementar à grade curricular das crianças. Então, a gente vai durante o horário escolar fazer as atividades e a gente sai com a turma, junto com a professora, até a praia fazer esse trabalho. Né? Então, é, as crianças já vão para a escola... E elas participam, é, é opcional, não é obrigatório, né? mas a gente não teve caso de crianças não querendo participar da atividade. Eles têm um envolvimento assim, muito grande. Né? Inclusive, a gente tem formas de avaliar isso no fim do ano com é, questionários para as crianças e para as profs, para ter esse feedback tanto deles quanto das famílias, do quanto isso está chegando nas famílias e está sendo bem positivo. Eles passam para as famílias o que eles aprendem, inclusive, eles começam a exigir deles mudanças de hábitos em relação à questão do consumo né, de plásticos e da disposição disso. Well, just, just to translate for those people who... Uh, she was just saying that the activities are uh, optional for the students. They are not obligatory activities. They occur in a period outside their uh, normal class period. It's targeted to f elementary uh, children, uh, school uh, children, like fourth and fifth grade. And uh, in the end of the year, uh, they do uh, assessments with the children and their parents. So to measure the impacts of the activities and the results show that uh, children li uh, take a lot to their homes and, uh, ch and, and ask for their parents to change their attitudes regarding uh, the litter and uh, they uh, evaluate through questionnaires. Is it? I think yeah. that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think there was one more question there, sorry. Did you have a question? Thank you. Thank you, Caroline, for your presentation. It was quite impressive. And obviously the focus of your work are the children. Yes. But my question is, do you have some special module, special attention to the educator? Because in Garopaba, po possibly their mobility is limited. They, you don't change educator too much, but um, 
do you follow them? Do you give them some special attention in order to, to promote some capacity building for them, especially? Um. Nas escolas de Garopaba, a gente tem, dependendo da escola, tem uma mudança muito constante de professores. Não, tem escolas que têm um grupo já bem consolidado, que não muda há anos, mas temos várias escolas que todo ano mudam os professores. Então, é uma, um pré-requisito do projeto, junto com a rede municipal, que os professores participem das atividades desde o primeiro encontro até as atividades de campo né, e, o, e o final do projeto na escola. Inclusive, eles respondem esses questionários para a gente ver o quanto que isso está sendo importante para eles, enquanto é, agregação de conhecimentos para as aulas né, e como o próprio conhecimento pessoal também. E o quanto que eles estão conseguindo utilizar esses dados nas, nas próprias disciplinas que eles ministram na escola. Então, é um desafio, é, isso vai muito do perfil de cada professor. Tem professores que abraçam o projeto e fazem é, projetos maravilhosos ao longo do ano com os dados, né, inclusive teatro, música, e outros professores não se envolvem tanto. É um it's a challenge. Okay. She was just saying it's a challenge to promote the capacity or the training of teachers, but they do that, it's a, a requisite for the teachers to participate in the project, should be trained and participate in all the activities they promote. Afterwards, they also uh, include some of these aspects of the training into their day-to-day -day, uh, classes and they, they share this with them. Uh, and do this like theaters and, and promoting drawings and so several activities, and that's it, I think. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. It was very nice. <laughs> um, I would like to know, because it is a big challenge to know uh, if what you do with the children will continue we, if this effect is permanent or is just uh, that year or next year. So I would like to know if you follow these children, if you know about them, how is it? Because uh, it's eight years of uh, your uh, project. So you have children now, about 20, I don't know, 20 years old, uh, yes. So do you have access to them, these adults, these adolescents now? Sometimes. It's a challenge. Um, nós temos algumas famílias que são conhecidas né, de amigos com crianças que participaram desde o primeiro ano do projeto, que agora estão com 17, 18 anos. E a gente consegue acompanhar o quanto que o projeto impactou a vida deles, na atitude deles e também uh, nas escolhas agora profissionais, alguns indo para a área ambiental. Mas, na grande maioria, como são 12 escolas e, e a gente trabalha com uma média de 370 crianças por ano de toda a rede municipal, a gente acaba não conseguindo ter esse acompanhamento do posterior, né? o que, que aconteceu, para onde foi, se isso está impactando ou não. E isso é uma preocupação que a gente tem, a gente já discutiu dentro da equipe várias vezes como conseguir esse acompanhamento, como conseguir esses dados para ter um, um parâmetro, né? para poder seguir o impacto que o nosso trabalho fez na vida dessas crianças. E se alguém tiver alguma sugestão, a gente agradece muito. She was just saying about the difficulty that is to uh, to be in touch with the children that participate in the program. That, that they are they are working with 12 schools and 300 children per year, so it's difficult to follow them. But they are in close uh, contact with some families, and they can see the impact of the project in these children and their choices in life, like they choose to uh, do some. Uh, faculty college on environmental uh, areas, so it is, it is impacting, but 
it's a, they are worried about how to do it. It's such a large scale project and it's a necessity for them. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Uh, I, I, I posso perguntar em português para você? Não, mas vai dar trabalho para ela. Uh, this, this program uh, is included in PPPs? You know PPPs? Yes, yes, it's included. Ok. Thank you. And, como sugestion, you, you uh, take a question ou entrevista uh, to uh, the children when begin and past uh, year, another question. Okay. And uh, you can compare the entendement. Yes, thank you. Um, fica um pouco difícil para nós esperar passar um ano, dois ou cinco, porque a rede municipal de educação é até o quinto ano. Então, as crianças saem da rede municipal e vão para a rede estadual. E daí já complica o acesso com essas escolas, porque é outro nível governamental e, e também são turmas muito grandes de crianças. Mas a gente pode tentar conseguir uma parceria com essa escola. Inclusive, a gente gostaria de continuar o trabalho com essas crianças no nível mais aprofundado de conhecimento e de pesquisa com eles na praia, para os que tiverem interesse. Just to translate that, PPP is the political pedagogical projects of the schools here in Brazil. Uh, so they, she was saying that it's difficult to include in the PPPs because uh, the children stay in the elementary school for five years and it's a, a very short time period. Then they, they choose to schools that are under the state uh, governance and so elementary school is under the municipality the city's governance and the the high school is under state so it's a, a difficult it's a barrier for them to do this kind of uh, intervention in this uh, pedagogical projects of the schools so any last questions before we move on no thank you Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Caroline. <laughs> I'm enchanted by this project now. <laughs> uh, it's a huge example of science literacy initiative, and let's discuss it more about, about it in the afternoon. So now uh, we are going to call Natalia Zafra. She, okay. <laughs> she's the founder and general director of the Mundo Sem Bitucas mo movement, the world without cigarette but movement. Uh, graduated in business administration from the University of Campinas, designer for sustainability by Gaia Education, and postgraduating in sustainability strategic management by FIA coordinator of the Zero Waste Week in Rio in 2017, entrepreneur, oh, sorry, entrepreneur sem, semi-finalist of Banco Challenge Rio 2016, Shell Youth Initiative 2017, supported by Habits Incubator in University of Sao Paulo. She worked as sustainability analyst at a large company in the electric power sector in Rio de Janeiro. Thank you, Natalia. Hi everyone, so thank you for introducing me. So I start to speak a little bit about Mundo Sem Bitucas in search of a better world to live without cigarette litter. So you know this, it's common to see the people smoking and fruit. <laughs> That's okay. So I can start now. <laughs> For so, it's me. Uh, a question: How many cigarette litter do you see on the streets every day? So, so many. 
Smoker numbers. According to the World Earth Organization, 1.6 billion of smokers in the world. On average, they smoke 7.7 cigarettes a day. That is about 12.3 billion of cigarette butts discarded daily. So to reflect, does the cigarette filter have the same path as the bottle? Problem: Cigarette filters, not plastic straw, so I have many straw here. The most contaminant of the ocean. I don't know yet, because in my uh, monitoring, I can see cigarette butts all the time. But in my beach, like uh, Copacabana, Ipanema, uh, Canal 3, uh, Canal 3. Uh, in Santos, having so many cigarette butts. But this information is very important to search more to, uh, to t talk about this information because it's very dangerous take, to cap data and speak about that. Scenario like uh, news cigarette butts, n not plastic straws. Are the worst contaminants of ocean, according to the new study. So, under the largest continuum beach cleanups exposed by the Ocean Conservatory, has been collecting trash early on the beach since 1986. In that time, cigarette butts were by far the most collected trash in the, on the beach. So, this number is. 2.4 million cigarette bullets. It's so many. Uh, impacts in the environment, birds, fish can eat this little litter. How long until it's deposited? Almost 10 years to deposit. Is cigarette toxic waste? Yeah, it's a uh, toxic waste. Um, have a search speaking in f more than 4,000 toxins, substances including even metals. Uh, it's possible to cause the flood, fire, and about the Mount Sambitukas, it starts idea about the cigarette litter problem. So we started this. For this man, I start spe uh, speaking and reflecting about the problem. So in this case in MASP in 2014. So Mundo Sembitucas, it was born of the border to see the great amount of cigarette butts in streets and city walks of the capital Sao Paulo. Uh, have many activities here. I s so Today, it seeks to raise the awareness of smokers and the non-smokers about the social environment and impact of cigarette types in the environment with cleanups, workshops, speaks, mapping, artistic inter interventions, and campaigns. Sorry. 
and cleanups. Here in the first one is in Santos. It's possible to see 3,030 cigarette filters in, with uh, 24 volunteers. In this case, it's Rio de Janeiro in Copacabana Beach. Um, cleanups in, in the parks, in Ibirapuera Park. Uh, Somas Festival in Jaú. Workshops, construction of portable ashtray with recyclable, reusable material. Speech, um, university, speaking our students. Sidewalk mapping, with a collab app helps to map the problem in Sao Paulo. Artistic interventions, he use of toilet paper rolls turned its large cigarette litter to show that there is no small garbage. Campaign C by a world without bitukas. In clean up Maspi last year. So I can other movie. <laughs> Se você fuma um cigarro, não tem um problema nenhum. Eu também me amarro e sou da fumaça e viajar. Mas depois que eu viajo, eu me conscientizo. Pego a bituca do chão e jogo no lixo. Aí, eu, isso eu... é verdade, mano. Deixa até eu te falar. Como será a casa desse povo? Imagina que é um lar. E o lar é um planeta, sabe? Aqui é muita treta, já que se esquerda aprender. Agora aceita e aceita tudo que eu digo. Você sabe bem que nunca tem que ir no lixo. Porque senão o bagulho é proceder. Se a pituca não for no lixo, mano, o lixo é você. Já entendeu qual que foi nessa sessão? Cuidado, planeta, mano, deixar de ser cuzão. Você sabe bem, sabotagem veio falar. Com hip hop e bondade, aqui eu faço um bom lugar. E é pra vocês também, é referência. Encosta mesmo pra ouvir freestyle com essência. Você sabe bem, e é sessão de descarrego. Os moleque que manda ver se e vai sem medo. É descarrego com identificação. Eu pego um cigarro do chão e jogo o bicho. Sem Bitucas Network. Nowadays, we have uh, a group inside the WhatsApp. Have a, almost um, 147 um, volunteers. And in this case, we talk about, we discuss the, the cigarette buds and initiatives around the world. It's very interesting. So. In the future, to develop an international network with the same subject of the raise awareness about the social and environment impacts of cigarettes and uh, volunteers around the world together in search of the better world to live if without cigarette buds. Yeah, it's possible. We are stronger together. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Any questions? Thank you. Hi, Natalia, thank you. Uh, so the question is about mainly the, the comp components of the, the cigarette butt. So you said that they, we have a lot of toxins, right? But the material it's made, so I've heard, some people say that there is plastic on yeah. it, so the filter is plastic. Some people say that there are a few that are not plastic. Do you have this number? And the just number a second. Exactly, I don't know, but it's plastic. It's the, the filter is plastic. Okay, too. So Acetato de celulose. I don't know in English. Do you know? Cellulose. But it's considered, cellulose is considered plastic? Is that? Okay. Okay. And uh, just a matter of 
sharing, I guess. Um, there's a private company now that is, that is recycling the the bitucas, the cigarette butts. So there are a few m municipalities in in Sao Paulo coast that are making agreements so they can collect this um, this butt, cigarette butts, and then recycle it, and they transform it into basically uh, pa paper material like notebooks and stuff like that. So I don't know if you have any type of partnership as well with this kind of companies that can recycle all the material that you're collecting as well. I try, <laughs> but I don't have money to, buy, uh, to pay the uh, a private company. So here in Brazil, near São Paulo, have Apoiato Reciclo. So this company uh, recycling the cigarette butts and transforming recycled paper. So I ask to Poyato, but huh, Natalia, you need money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I've heard even for municipalities, sometimes it's hard to make the agreement because it's too expensive. So maybe like if we create like an act work or something, we can try to get together with, with them. If the cigarette butts are one of the most encount encountered items, so maybe with our strength of all the institutions, maybe we can, I don't know, make agreements with lower prices, maybe. It's true, because um, last month, the big company of tobacco called me and try to, to uh, maybe greenwashing to like a partner, but for me it's not good because I have um, my essences. It's not. Uh, I don't know the the. the não bateu, entendeu? Não deu certo. And. I, I have many calls with um, uh, politicians here in São Paulo started this year with uh, Eliseu Gabriel, is a vereador. It's the name, of, uh, I don't know, vereador in English. Because she, uh, he has a law about put the astray portable ashtray around the city. It's a municipal law. So I talk and talk and talk. Maybe the next year we can do something better for this world because in my, I think it's only have one world. So we need conservated. Yeah, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> it's complaint. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Perfect. I've got a question myself, but I'll hold it back. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much. That was such a nice talk. Um, so my question's more about um, uh, kind of the alternatives that are available to smokers in Brazil. Um, I'm from the UK, and now it's quite popular for people to use vaporizers rather than cigarettes. And I have not seen um, one person, I've only been here two days, <laughs> but I didn't see any vaporizers anywhere. No? <laughs> yeah, they, so they do exist. And also, I know um, that you can get uh, non-plastic uh, filters. Yeah. These are for rolling tobaccos. How popular are they um, in Brazil? I, I have many friends, activist friends, use them. But it's very uh, more expensive here in Brazil. But I don't know; it's not common. See, oh, oh. really? Ah, no, I understood that she was talking about the filter. No, it's legal here. Cigarettes, electric, yeah. No, it's not common. Uh, what kind of um, legis legislations are there for um, cigarette advertising? I've noticed that um, the, now in the UK we have um, 
everything uh, is covered, so you can't see the brand names and things like this. So they're going to implement packaging with, with just no branding, just white, plain packaging. And I wonder whether, if there was something like this, whether this would be an opportunity to um, provide messages to the smokers about, about where, I guess, um, I guess most people don't even think about it. I know a lot of people who smoke have very strong environmental values. They would never, ever drop a, a bottle on the floor, but I've seen them putting their cigarette butts on the floor. Um, so I wonder whether, is there anything, I understand that you don't want to work with tobacco companies, but I wonder whether there would be some way to provide them this messaging at the source. I don't know. I don't know if I com understand the question. <laughs> I'm not sure it was a question. <laughs> uh, it might be a bit of advice or um, suggestion about yeah. kind of providing information um, when people are looking to buy and using it to try Is to stop. Is there any legislation coming in, um, like from the government, uh, some restrictions around tobacco, packaging, advertising, anything yes. like this? Here in Brazil, we have the, the, the campaign in, on the, yes. Do you have messages on the packets already? Yes. Health, yeah, yes. that's the same. Always. Thing. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's impossible because I have, I have a friend, a smoker, and put the, the adhesive. Stickers. Stickers. So, ah, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, there's a oh, lot of happened. research on that or hiding it into other boxes and stuff, so you don't see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm a psychologist and I have done some work on this, um, yeah. uh, these people avoiding these um, messages. But I wonder um, whether just getting people to think about getting the smoke, obviously we need to target the behaviour at the, the source. We need to, it's good to pick it up and recycle, but yeah, obviously we need to stop them throwing in the first place. It's terrific. Thank you. Yeah. I think there was Thank a question. You. Uh, it's, it's not a question, it's just to share that uh, my husband is a vaporizer user and he uh, says that uh, Anvisa, our uh, government agents of health, didn't um, allow to, to sell vaporizer here. But we think that it's because of the lobby of the cigarette industry. So the health of the people is uh, in danger because of the uh, earnings of the, the industry of cigarettes in Brazil. We, we are the third world yet. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And in this case, I think it's other electronic ways why? Wh why? Other? It's not necessary. <laughs> and I but have, if I'm allowed, a quick question myself. Um, so I think just the conversation and your talk has already stimulated lots of questions and everybody can relate or understand or have experiences with. Um, and it sounds like you've got a, a, a great pool of volunteers, very engaged and activists. How did you get them? How did you um, engage people in the first place to do this? So I think I'm a um, multi <laughs> abilities for this situation because it's nowadays I'm an internal interpreter in ah empreendedor <laughs> entrepreneur and I I love to do friends and engage the, a new friends or people. Nowadays I study sustainability and other things. And my friends talk with friends, talk with friends. It's possible deve to develop the, the network. So it's hard because I sleep, I think, four hours a day because it's, it's have many messages. I think Teresa, João, and Silmara, it's possible to see the, the group inside the WhatsApp. And I have um, the Facebook. Have many, more than 3,000 3, people there and send me messages. I, I want to do the same. 
how? So it's chatting all the time is is very important, mm -hmm. and I'm very happy to this result. Thank you. And any more questions? No. Okay then. We'll move on. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. Now you have to pick up your cigarette butt. Yeah. <laughs> See that nobody took it for yeah. you. <laughs> Shame. Thank you, Natalia, for an inspiring talk on this important subject. And we are going to discuss these initiatives later on, on the discussion period at afternoon. Now I'd like to call Elisa Vans Luis Mank. She is an oceanographer graduated in 2015 at the Oceanogra Oceanographic Institute here at the University of Sao Paulo. She facilitates educational activities related to marine debris in the Understand the Debris, Understand the Debris program in the north coast of Sao Paulo since 2016. Elisa is currently finishing her master's on integrated environmental analysis in the Federal University of Sao Paulo. And more recently, she has joined the Coastal Meeting Monitoring Team in Ubatuba. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you, Natalia. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm here to present the Programa Entendo Lixo program. <laughs> Uh, or understand the debris program, right? So it's a trocadilho, so a word twist in Portuguese for a tent. So we work, usually we work in a tent and talk, we were talking about marine debris, okay? So I'll present it later for you guys. Um, this project is, uh, is born in Tuha's lab, okay? We have a lot of different people here that have already been working with us. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit of the story of the history of the project. So uh, our coordinators are Tuha and Marcia. Uh, Lucas, who was here before, I think he had to leave, but he and I are the main team, the current team. And this huge list here, almost everyone is here, <laughs> luckily. And they, we've been working together in a few different uh, activities. So the um, project Intendo Lixo, or Understand the Debris, uh, is fruit of a partnership between institu the Oceanograph I Oceanographic Institute and Plastivida. Uh, Plastivida is uh, a society of the plastic industry. So, uh, where is Natalia? So, we're working with the plastic industry. Maybe we can talk a little bit more of, about the pros and cons. And so, this project was born in uh, 2012, after Plastivida signed a global, uh, cert not certificate, how do you call it? Agreement. Agreement, thank you. Agreement uh, of working with marine debris to mitigate marine debris, right? So this project is a technical scientific project to mitigate marine litter and promote scientific studies, environmental education, and good practices of uh, waste disposal. Uh, back then, then uh, we the, the project was mainly focused in promoting research, so uh, supporting the well, Tuha's lab researches related uh, research related to marine debris, and we had a very big uh, monitoring project, and we researched three different states: so São Paulo, Alagoas, and Bahia, with several surveys along the year. Uh, but this monitoring program, unfortunately, only lasted for three years. But there are some results that are coming out and being pl published uh, in the f uh, next few months or, or year. I don't know exactly how the research is, but it's already turning into the, uh, an article that everyone has access, all right? So these are some fo uh, one photo of the, the people working there at the time. And unfortunately, the, the monitoring was undertaken, was uh, stopped, sorry, in, the, in 2015. After that, the, the scope of the 
project changed a little bit and we started focusing more on environmental education and that's where I came in. So I wasn't part of the, of the, of the regular team, team in, back in 2012. So in 2016, we started the uh, environmental education with this school in Peruibi. Uh, that the, the idea was the, of the activity was a four-day workshop where uh, the, the kids went to, to the beach with the professor. There was a teacher that was very um, involved with the thematic, and he could even take it further with the kids. And the idea was also to make a more scientific approach with the children, so they went back with the data they collected and uh, made, made graphs and all. So it was, it, we had this scientific approach as well with the, with the kids. So that was the first uh, big, activities, big activity that we had. And then in the Olympic Games, we had the opportunity to stay in Rio in this beautiful tent here close to Museu do Manhã, so the Tomorrow Museum in, in Rio. And I think I have, yeah. So as you see, we had different banners. Banners was a, a I, th I think six per six meter, uh, square meter uh, tent. So that's the idea of Intenda o Lixo, right? And we stayed there for two months talking with people that, well, from different uh, nationalities, different social backgrounds and all. So it was very, for me, Personally, it was very intense because I got to see the real world. world. So we, I had to talk to people from, uh, I don't know, Scotland and all. And so we had to have a lot of knowledge and all. And also we had to talk to people that were living in the street. So how do you approach someone that's living on the street and talk about garbage, right? They don't even have what to eat. We don't even have sewage system pro uh, taken care of properly, right? So these were some interesting topics that uh, started appearing for our team. Uh, and also, we had some interesting, uh, well, people coming up to us and asking, oh, is it here that you're making the, the, the tooth surgery? Because we were all in white and we had these banners, everything was very clean and we were like, not really. So that, that was, that's the thing about, I think, coming out of the university and being in the the street talking to people from different backgrounds, right? So that was very nice. And from that, we had, oh sorry, from that we, I think we learned a lot and then we could, we're still on our way, but start, started to change a little bit the activities, think of a, of a more, we're trying to, a more continuous strategy as well and what to, to speak with different realities. Uh, and also these, all these questions arise from this experience in Rio, all right? Because it was very intense and for us, continued, right? For the team. So uh, the main goals of the project are, so to bring the attention to the anthropogenic impacts in the ocean, right? So Tuha has already presented this image here. So we're talking about marine debris, but the idea is to tackle all this information, not informa information necessarily, but tackle all these problems that we face in the ocean. So to bring the eyes to the ocean, right? And so we focus on marine debris by raising awareness of participants about their habits, about the waste management in general. So we talk about the, the whole process, not only about marine debris itself. So we try to, to bring questions, I think, <laughs> nor, nor, uh, guiding questions so then people can start to think differently about how they relate to what they're producing as waste. Uh, and also, we attempt to improve marine environmental quality by doing so. So this is our small activities chart. So you see, we have a lot of dreams, so we want to do a lot of things, and I'm gonna show throughout the presentation some things that we're being able to work on and some things that we're not we haven't been able to really work on still. So we had the itinerant uh, tent, that was the one in Rio, and from that we learned a lot, as I said, and uh, two, two years ago, I guess, 2017, we changed this format and uh, created the, the, f the ocean we want, that's the name, o mar que queremos, activity, 
there's a big tunnel, tunnel made out of tents, different tents. So you go in, you learn a little bit about the importance of the ocean, and then uh, the ocean gets a little bit dirty. We have all this waste we've already al also collected on the beach and all. So we put everything hanging. It's a very nice tunnel to go in. And at the, in the end, the idea is that everyone that passed through the ocean, through our ocean, clean and dirty ocean, make a commitment to what they can do to change. Uh, well, yeah, so it's a commitment to their future ocean. What can I do in my life to have the ocean I want for the future? So we all, everyone that works with this, with this uh, activity really like this last photo here because we have a lot of very nice phrases and commitments of people or even just thoughts and I think it's something nice that we learned is that people like to interact with the activity right so leave a message is something that's really nice very nice so we, we, also, we also have this workshop with students that's Tuha there that was last month I guess we were in a very class 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 AAAA plus school, but that's not the only schools that we work with. Uh, this is Colegio Porto Seguro in Campinas, close to Campinas. So we show some photos. There are the, the kids are separated in different groups. Uh, they receive photos of marine debris that we found in, yeah, marine debris that we found at the beaches in our monitorings. And they discuss, they create, a, basically they create a story about this item. All right, and then we share it with, other, with the other groups. Uh, this is Lu, Luciana, that's back there. She's working in another strategy, so we have the, a basin full of water with different materials. So we have plastic, we have iron, well, different types of metals. We have paper, you know, we have different materials. And then we can talk to the, chi to, to the children about the diff different densities and how the how do the items work or the debris work at sea all right so how how they spread among the different compartments of the ocean that's very nice as well uh, I'm gonna skip citizen science and elaboration of activities with teacher for now because that's something we still need to improve a little uh, we've been doing a lot of talks in different uh, with different stakeholders so this one is uh, in Ubatuba as well, we had a, it was a talk with, with uh, people from the municipalities, from different stakeholders, basically. And we're also doing it at schools. So this is Tuha again with workshops with uh, teachers, which we also do the same strategy of the photos. And we talk to the, ch to the teachers on, uh, of how can we bring this topic in to, to the classroom, right? So it, we're trying to build this strategy along with them, with the teachers, to bring it to the school. Uh, we've been also in different events with our stand. Here are different photos. The first one is in the launching of the, the national plan to combat marine uh, debris. We were in Ilha Bela and Santos. And here, we have a photo in a race that happened in, in Ilha Bella. So we're trying to be on the different events that we can as well. And then we can relate to marine debris, you not know, specifically, specifically at school or more formal places. Um, so since we have the, the partnership with Plasti Vida, we also try to do some, not, not necessarily lectures, but uh, bring the topic to discuss inside some of the industry uh, actors, right? So this is one, one, of, one of the examples of uh, a meeting that we had. And from these meetings, there's not necessarily, the point is not necessarily to do the, the environmental education with them, but the idea is to bring the topic and then uh, together create products to, uh, to improve the situation of waste disposal or creation, uh, for maybe to have you explain later about the, about the pellets in the industry. So how can we reduce the loss of pellets in the plastic industry, for example? Uh, so we were doing beach monitoring, now we're not doing it proper, like a proper monitoring. 
And uh, for the educational material, I don't know if everyone could uh, check our comic book, <laughs> comic revistinha. Uh, that's Mariana here. And in 2016 in Rio, we got to, to know her when she was five years old at the time. And she came with her dad and said, ah, I want, uh, well, her dad and her said that they wanted to clean the beach. So she was super excited to do a cleanup. And they organized it uh, with the family and, and, and friends. So we were luckily at Rio when she could manage to do it. And we helped her, which was very cool. Uh, so inspired by her. By, by her story, we created this Mariana and the Super Macabros, so like the, the, where the debris are super creepy, are monsters, but in the end, uh, we always uh, explain that the story is not really that the debris is the monster, right? The, the debris is just the debris is just a material, right? So explain the whole story of the debris, how it got to the beach. So then that's the idea of the of our comic book. I think we may have some to <laughs> distribu distribute if everyone, anyone likes as well. Uh, so volunteering. Uh, our, thank you. our target volunteers are mainly people that uh, have scientific, ocean scientific background, right? So from that list, it's not every name. I didn't have every name there. But most of the people are people that are working with us in the lab. Uh, so they have already an involvement with marine sciences. Uh, we have punctual but frequent activities. So every now and then we have people going to the coast and working with us there. Uh, we've had a lot of experiences now in the beginning of the year. Now we're for the, the high season, right? We have, I think, four, three or four uh, different activities happening. And people from Sao Paulo went there to build the activity and make it happen. So these are some photos. Um, and what we can do, basically, is to provide the mainten maintenance costs. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't survey. We don't uh, evaluate the, the, the volunteers yet. We don't have this uh, approach yet. So these are, are some different photos of the people that are, work are working with us. Uh, we do some cleanups with uh, partner institutions, especially in the northern coast of Sao Paulo. That's where I live. Uh, so this first photo here, so both are in Ubatuba, the same city that Guilherme was presenting before. Uh, the first one is in Barra Seca. That's a group. It's a network of local people that live there uh, that are organizing these activities. So we come as uh, partners. And the second one is the Verão no Clima Nuclima Beach Cleanup that helped in the beginning of the year as well. And to finish the whole process, uh, we were there, there to help with the cleanup as well. Uh, but in this situation, we are not the organizers. We just come to help and to, uh, I don't know, to, to come with our knowledge about cleanups and try to help the their organization in a lower level of commit commitment. Like, we're not the, the main organizers. And also, we're doing the cleanups with schools. So both of them were uh, in la were last year. So we do the cleanup. We go back to school or to a covered place, and we separate the material. So I've learned with uh, this strategy with some people that are here. Juan was telling me a lot about that, about the importance of separating the material after the cleanup. So not only collecting everything. Uh, tighten the bag and then that's it, leave it to someone to collect it, right? So you go back and you look at what you collected. That, that to me, seemed very important so that people could, the children could actually know what are the materials. So it's a bit more shocking than seeing everything closed in a bag. And we are using the, the Ocean Conservancy forms, but we find it difficult, difficult to organize large group groups uh, with a scientific method methodology to, s to survey everything. So I haven't been, me specifically, with these uh, small groups of children, I haven't been able to look at this data and put it as a scientific data afterwards because I don't really, uh, I'm not really sure that it's scientifically well collected in a way, right? 
because it's hard to organize with all the children running everywhere. So. Uh, so we're trying to raise awareness by our by basically using our guiding question. So what is marine debris? Where does it come from? That where does it go to? What the what what are the impacts it causes? And who is the responsible? So thinking about not only you citizen, you're the problem. So don't throw your rubbish away. So we're always. Oh, away you do but not on the floor so we're always trying to bring a more complex conversation to the to the participants so uh, thinking about the different stakeholders Natalia who's also back there she's always asking the kids ah if you were a, a I forgot prefeito how do you say prefeito huh? ah the major yeah so if you're the major of the city what would you do to combat to combat the the marine debris so always bringing this question so then the people can understand that every, everyone can change something, not only personally, but also professionally to make these things work as a system, right? Um, so we bring photos of curious debris and impacted animals, so then it's a bit more shocking as well. Uh, we critic In the, our conversation, we crit critically analyze local waste management and we have different stra strategies and adaptable, so we can uh, work with different groups. So from here, our next steps, as I s I've shown you, we're working with this very big chart menu of activities. We still have a lot to work on the um, social media way, because Lucas and I were not social influencers at all, so <laughs> Natalia, if you have some tips for us, would be very good, because we usually cannot post a lot of things on the web. Uh, so that's something that we really think it's important nowadays. Uh, Mariana too is on the way as well, so the <laughs> another comic book may come along fairly soon. Um, the beach monitor ma monitoring would be good if we could go back as well, but as I said, it's not part of, of the, the scope of the project right now, like a main part. And the citizen science and elaboration of activities with teachers is also something that we want to do, but since we have different uh, approaches, we're str just trying to uh, balance between all the, the strategies we have. Uh, so ba basically that's, that's it. This is a, a photo that Tuha took in 2016 16 as well. So in the Coke bottle is, us, is written, this is gold. Right. So the idea is that to talk about marine debris is an opportunity to put stakeholders together, even though maybe the, their essence or their um, goal is not exactly the same. But there are conver convergences. I don't know. Some some points are uh, convert. Uh, so maybe it's a an opportunity to tackle different uh, societal problems in general. So I forgot to put the social media, media, but we have our email here, and we also have Instagram and Facebook, even though it's not super active. And that's it. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank so uh, lots of activities. I can imagine yeah. you're not bored. <laughs> Any questions? Vou falar em português. É, eu, na verdade, queria agradecer pessoalmente a equipe do Entendo Lixo. Eu conhecia pessoalmente o professor Turra, mas agora estou conhecendo pessoalmente a Elisa. Eu acho que eu vi o Lucas por aqui, não sei. Que Eu sou da, do projeto Verão no Clima e queria agradecer mesmo a ajuda que vocês deram para a gente lá no Litoral Norte. Tá? Muito obrigada. Obrigada. Ela está apenas agradecendo a colaboração com... And, and then I will issue with another project, which is Summer in Climate. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Anything? Thank you. Hello, Elisa. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. And well, uh, congratulations for your work. 
it's really wonderful, everything that you're doing. And well, I would like to ask you about the beach cleanups and data recording that you mentioned. Uh, because you said that you use the forms of the Ocean Conservancy. And uh, those forms are really, really difficult. It, they have like 40 different items of litter. So sometimes I feel that you almost need a PhD to <laughs> use that uh, sheet. So how do you do it with the schools or with the volunteers uh, for the data sheet? Is there a training with them? before uh, going to the beat, <coughs> sorry, or, uh, well, that's it, if there is any training or something before. Yeah, right, so no, there's no, uh, um, so the form that we use is adap adapted, right, mm -hmm. so we don't use the, 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 whole the thing. one that they <laughs> spread, so uh, it's adapted, we try to simplify it, uh, but still, I find it difficult. Even the, sim the simple form, the simple worksheet, is very hard to work because most of the cleanups we go with the children or with the, the people from the, the community straight after having the first conversation with them. So then you go, you can present the form quickly, but still, people put, uh, for example, styrofoam, like the small balls of styrofoam, they don't go as microplastic, but they go as tire foam. foam. So it's, it's very hard, and it's uh, like in the cleanups is one of the things that I think is the hardest. And the experience that we had with the Verano Clima was the same. That was a very big cleanup, and they were trying to uh, make it very organized because they had people working with them for, I don't know, a month straight. Mm -hmm and talking about marine debris and all, but still, when you get to, a f uh, to, to filling up a form at the beach, so you have different things happening, so I find it very hard to make, that's why like, I, I don't really count on it as a scientific data. Yeah. I, um, we simplify it, but still, it's not it's that difficult. simple <laughs> yeah, to work with. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and we've got time for one more question before we go for lunch. Oh, there we are. It's going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no uh, j only to say, uh, Elisa, th thanks for the, the presentation. Um, uh, there are several difficulties, uh, and you express it, the difficulties very, very well in terms of making things take longer. Eh? So it's not punctual activities or uh, uh, snapshots, uh, which is really, really difficult because you need to maintain resources, teams, and it's complicated. But we, we I would like to, to consider your intervention, Daniela, because we have a very nice initiative in Chile, now in the coast of the Pacific, named Científicos de la Basura, uh, you are representing uh, these guys here, not Martin Thiel and, and others, and they have lots, almost 100 protocols, tens of protocols to, te to, to work with teachers, with students, and then uh, I think we, we can build on the existing experience, uh, and they have a lot. So this kind of workshop will uh, create this kind of opportunity and I think we after the workshop build more not only uh, with the, the partners here in Brazil like the state government which is, which has a very important role in the in the aspect of money litter in, in, in the state both with educators schools and also uh, municipalities né? The, the, the 16 municipalities we have in the coast uh, uh, with the, 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 the NGOs and, and so on. I think that that's a, a nice opportunity. And then we have some assets in, in the Nintendo Lixo project, but all of, of our colleagues that were here brought a lot of, his, lot of assets, inputs, ideas, uh, data. One year ago, we didn't have data, mostly. Uh, now we have a lot of more data. We have the, the, the report of the Argonauta Institute. Amazing. Uh, it's, it's amazing. We didn't have that one year ago. So we need to have more. 
né, the data you are compiling né, in the EcoSurf, né, it's, it's fantastic. So I think that uh, it's not a question. <laughs> I just want to reinforce uh, that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Can I make a comment on what Tuha said? I think uh, we should uh, start also thinking on building capacity. Uh, you said that this uh, training of teachers and working with teachers is, is a, a challenge for you now, but I think we should uh, do it more and work with the courses here in the university or uh, what else uh, that deal with the initial uh, tra uh, training of teachers so they can multiply, I think, it's a challenge for all environmental education initiatives to work on a long-term uh, uh, way. So I think we should think on this and seek for people who are also wanting to do this. <laughs> so I think it's a good uh, way to, to start, a, a point to start. Thank you. So we'll end by saying thank you very much. Thank you. As you can see, <clears throat> this is a workshop uh, organized by British people <laughs> because we are on time. <laughs>